Well, hello, and welcome to Weathered Oak Media. I'm Will, and I hope you're all doing well out there. Thank you for joining me for episode two of my capstone video series, Working Class Creator. In this series, I'm showcasing some of the top design skills that I've picked up for the Adobe Creative programs during my three years at North Island College. One program that I've used a lot over the last three years is Adobe Illustrator. And that's what we're going to talk about in today's episode. I'll show you some helpful tips and tricks so that you can make a poster like this one with just the most basic tools. We'll talk about what makes an event poster really work and the main things you need to know when you're creating an event poster. We'll also, I'll also share with you some time-saving tips and tricks as well so that when you're in a rush, you can create a poster like this one in no time flat. I've got a lot to talk about and only so little time to do it, so let me roll my intro and we'll get right to it. Welcome back. Once again, I'm Will. So what makes an event poster really effective? What makes it work? Well, the three main things that you need to keep in mind when you're creating an event poster are what you need to tell your audience. What's happening, when it's happening, where it's happening. Take a look at this example from 1966. One of my favorite bands, Pink Floyd, drawn by one of my favorite artists, Bob Massey. Uh, in this poster, of course, you've got these amazing eye-catching graphics that really draw you in. They're serving their purpose. And as you can see here, the artist included what's happening, when it's happening, and where it's happening. Pink Floyd is playing at the Marquee in London at this time. What I wouldn't give for a time machine to go back and see that show. Here's another example that's very near and dear to my heart because I'm part of the crew for that festival, the Philberg Festival. And this one lists out all the bands in a nice block of text. It's easy to read. And that's the style that we're actually going to, uh, to kind of copy with, with my festival poster. And now this leads me to my main time-saving tip. This is the number one thing that I want you to take away from this video. The best part of, the best thing to speed up your workflow is to plan ahead. Whenever I have a, uh, a project that involves putting a lot of text into Adobe, what I like to do at first is to just write it all out into a Word document. That way, of course, I can do a spelling and grammar check, and then I can chunk it into nice little blocks that I can then copy and paste into Illustrator. In fact, why don't we go into Adobe Illustrator right now, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file, 8.5 by 11 inches, vertical orientation. We won't change anything else. Create. Here we are in the Illustrator workspace, and you'll notice I've got another artboard open here. It's a scratch pad. It's a place where I like to drop objects that I'm going to use in the main poster, like these images from Pixabay, as well as variations of my logo, and I practice drawing some mountains too. It's just a scratch pad. Okay, back to the main board here. So the first thing I like to do is I like to start with a solid colored background, and the easiest way to do that is to grab the rectangle tool over here, letter M on your keyboard, and uh, we won't change anything over here right now, but what we're going to do is we're just going to draw a rectangle that fills the entire space. All the way, just like that. There we go. Now you can hit the letter V on your keyboard or the selector tool up here. And with that selected, we can come over here, click on that little box next to stroke, turn that off, we don't need it. Then come up here to fill, and you can choose any color you want, but I'm going to start with this light shade of blue here. And then I'm going to fine tune it a little bit. Uh, I'm going to, you know, you could use the eyedropper here if you want. Or you could use those little sliders to dial in your color. There we go, there's a nice sky blue. The next thing I want to do is come up here to Object, and then I'm going to go with uh, Lock, Selection, Controller Command 2 on your keyboard would do this, and that keeps that rectangle from going anywhere accidentally. It's locked into place and we have a nice solid background. Next, we're going to come up here and we're going to start drawing our mountains. And I'm going to use the pen tool for this. You could use the pencil if you want, but the pen tool is pretty easy for this. With the pen tool selected, come up here to fill. And we're actually going to turn that off. And we're going to go here and we're going to choose a nice blue line for our stroke. But I don't want a very heavy line. I want to dial that down just a little bit to 0.25 actually. Thinnest it'll go. There we go. Now, over here, when you get to the edge, you'll see the word path pop up. Find yourself a starting point, and then from there, just start clicking away the shapes of your mountains. 
Notice the little helpful pink lines that keep you in, aligned with your height and with the center. And if you go off track, you can hit Ctrl or Command Z to back up a little bit. And there we go. And when you've reached the edge and you want to do a straight line, just hold down your Shift key before connecting each line. There we go. And there you go. Now we got the shape of our mountains. Hit uh, V on your keyboard or the selector tool. And with that selected, we can come up here to fill. And you could use the eyedropper if you want, but I want to try this gradient here, fading sky. But I don't like which way the gradient goes, so I'm going to click on gradient options. And this little window comes up. You want to click on the angle, negative 90. And there we go. Now we can just don't do anything else. Just close that little window, get it out of the way. Now click on your mountains and uh, hold your alter option key and slide up. And this makes a duplicate. And then with that duplicate selected, right click, arrange, send backwards. That's going to tuck it in behind it. Then go over here to flip horizontally. Makes your mountains look a little different. And we can even give them a little squish too to make them look a little more organic. There we go. So we now have a nice 3D mountain range. Looks pretty cool, doesn't it? So next what we're going to do is we're going to Bob Ross it up a bit and we're going to add some happy little trees. I'm going to go back to my scratch pad. I'm going to grab these trees that I found from pixabay.com and I'm just going to copy them and paste them. Now I could draw real trees, but I just don't have the time. This is, this is way easier and Pixabay images are free. Drag your trees down into space. Notice those helpful pink lines. And you can shrink them a little bit by holding down shift and dragging in from the corner. Holding shift keeps them from warping out of shape. And we've aligned those nicely. Now I want to make copies of these trees, so Alt and drag. Click, Alt, drag. And one more time. There you go. And then from there you can fine tune them. Maybe we'll give a couple of them a nice flip. A little bit of symmetry. Okay, symmetry. Now let's grab the tall one. Same thing, copy. Paste. And we'll drag that down over to the end here. Notice the helpful pink lines again. And you can use the arrow keys to fine tune it. There we go. Alt, drag. And let it go right there. Maybe we'll give that a flip too. Perfect. One more thing. Let's grab this Telecaster. Let's put that right in the middle. Don't let the box fool you. The guitar is perfectly vertical. And I'm going to size this up to shape and use these alignment tools over here to, uh, you know, make sure everything is all square. Line it up. And then dial back that opacity because we're going to put some text over top of this. So we want to make sure that people can still read the text. Beautiful. So for text, what I like to do here is I actually like to create a new layer. So hit these little bars, new layer. And of course, we're going to name it text. Okay. And before we go any further, I want to lock down layer one. So uh, I click here and there's a padlock. And that makes sure that anything on layer one doesn't get moved accidentally. We're only working in the text layer now. And we're going to use this type tool a lot. Copy and paste is going to be our friend here. Remember that document? Well, let's grab what's happening. Copy that. And we're going to use the type tool and we're going to drag out a big box here. That should be big enough. And we'll paste in our headline. I know you can't see it right now, but I'll zoom in in a second. Okay, now with that selected, come over here. And this is where we can fine tune everything. First we'll center it. And then we'll center it in the middle. And we'll come up here and we'll choose a font. Now, you can choose any font you want. Adobe's got plenty of them to choose from. And if you don't see one you like, you can also click on Find More, and it'll bring up some that you can activate. It's not going to load for me. So I'm going to go with this one called Quirkwood Chunky. And now let's just make it big. Bigger, 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 bigger. Great. Okay, and if this happens, all you have to do is just sort of click there and pull the box wider so you can see it. 
Make sure though that you don't warp your text. Notice, you know, keep your eye on the on the pixel size and make sure you don't stretch or uh, or distort the text. Use your alignment tools again to make sure everything is plumb. And let's turn that white. Drag that up into place and of course we can fine tune this later and we will. Now, when it's happening and where it's happening. Same thing, but this time we're going to reduce the size of our font and we'll pick something different like this one over here, cafeteria. Drag that out, paste, there you go. Again, square everything up, get everything lined up, drag it around, place it where it needs to go, spend some time with this, and same thing with the rest of the text. Now watch me fine tune this by adjusting the line height over here on the right. This will give me a little bit more space to play with. This is probably where you'll spend most of your time actually, is just fine tuning the placement of your text. Again, adjust the line height over here. Squish that in together a little bit. Make sure everything's all square. And again, use those grids, use the helpful lines. Uh, you can also activate the grids. If you go up to the top of your screen there, you'll see view and you can see grids, rulers, guidelines. It's all there to help you out. I'm just freehanding this. There we go. Now let's add some special effects. Stylize, drop shadow. 75% is a bit harsh, so I'm gonna dial that down to 52 to match that telly. There we go. And it'll remember for the rest of the text, stylize, drop shadow, and just keep going all the way down. There we go. Now that lifts the text right off of that background. And well, to me, it's easier to read. Hopefully you can see it well. Now I'm gonna go into that layer there. You notice me move pretty quickly, but I hid the top layer for a moment. I'm gonna dial back the opacity of that guitar and pop that open. Relock that. There we go. That looks way better. One more thing is my logo. Down here at the bottom is usually where you would find all the sponsor logos. And well, since this is my festival, I'm the sponsor. So I'm just going to place my logo right down here. Looking pretty good. One more thing to do here. Select all your text, go up to type and hit create outlines. And what this does is it allows people on other devices to view this without having to download the fonts. Now that looks pretty good now, doesn't it? So now's probably a good time to save our work, right? So file, save as, save it wherever you're gonna save it. In my case, this is part of my capstone, so I'm gonna save it in here. This is my fifth time doing this, so I'm gonna call it Festival Poster 5. I've done a few practice runs. And save. Okay, it's saving, and there you go. Now, from here, there are a couple of different ways that you can export this. I'll show you quickly here. You can export for screens as a PNG, rename it and save it wherever you want to save it. I'm not going to do that here. Um, you can also export as a JPEG. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to save as Adobe PDF. Save it wherever you want to save it. Hit save. Continue. And I'm not going to change anything other than this right here. High quality print. Leave everything else alone. Save as PDF. Voila! Your rock festival poster. So as you can see, even with just the most basic tools in Illustrator, you can create a very effective and very eye-catching poster that, uh, that holds its own with, uh, with the other ones that I showed you earlier in this video. It effectively tells the viewer what's happening, when it's happening, and where it's happening. And all we had to do was just play with a little bit of text, play with a little color, do a simple little drawing, and drag in a picture. That's it. I really hope that uh, you out there watching this have uh, taken at least something from this video. Uh, if even just one person out there who saw this says, wow, I didn't know that. Great video. Thanks, Will. You know what? I'll take that as a win. You're welcome. Of course, I still want to get an A on this overall project. Don't get me wrong. I want to help people as well. I want to share my knowledge with others. And I really hope that these videos are doing that for you guys.
In the next video, we're going to shift to Adobe InDesign and we're going to create a magazine cover. It's not too different from working with Adobe Illustrator, but there are a few things that you've got to know. And I'll get into it more in the next video, episode three, and that's coming out very soon. Until then, please take care of yourselves and each other, and I hope to see you again sometime.